CataractCoach.com, a wrinkled fibrotic lens capsule. So how can we complete the capsular axis for this intumescent white cataract? Now we'll start off by just making our paracentesis incisions, and we're going to put tripan blue dye and stain the capsule. And if you look at that central capsule, you can see there are a couple linear lines there. So let's wash out the blue dye, fill the out viscoelastic, and here we go, starting the rexus, and no milky fluid comes out. So that's a good thing. Now it's safe to go ahead and make the main incision. And let's try tear the rexus here. So we're grabbing the capsule, and it just doesn't tear. We're going to use these small Van Ness scissors to make a cut in the anterior lens capsule, and then we'll try again to tear a capsular rexus. So we make a small cut there, and we can now tear a capsular rexus. And here we go. Make the rexus large in order to encompass those central wrinkles. Also watch carefully. Is there zionor laxity? In this case, luckily there's not. Sometimes zionor laxity can lead to the wrinkled anterior lens capsule. But in this case, it's just fibrotic. There's a traumatic cataract, and luckily the zionos look reasonable. So now it got stuck again on that band, so we'll use with one hand the forceps, and the other hand, we're using a cystotome or bent needle to make a little cut here to help continue this capsular rexus. And so we have to be careful in doing this, and it takes a few tries to break through that band, but once we do, we can re-grab and now continue our capsular rexus. So watch carefully, making sure it doesn't run out. We it has a tendency to, so we have to stop, put in more viscoelastic, change the force vector, how we're pulling it. So let's put more viscoelastic. There's the edge. It has not run out to the zonules yet, so we're safe. So we can grab that and bring it in. And again, our goal is to encompass as much of this wrinkled anterior lens capsule as we can within the rexus. So here's using that little maneuver to bring it around. And there's the very last bit of it. And it looks pretty reasonable. Almost done. Still just a little piece left there, a little bit of an attachment. So again, using that cystotome to sharply dissect and break through that. Now, it's not a perfect capsular rexus. So you have to be very careful during nucleus removal. We still may have some radialized edges that could go south. So we've got to be careful on that. Take our time. We're going to bring that nucleus up. Let's try to get this out of the capsule bag. It's not very dense. The center part has a little density to it, but mostly this is cortical whiteout. And we just chopped it into two halves and we can break it up more. This will emulsify very quickly. Certainly in this case, the difficult part of the case is not nucleus removal. Now with our irregular anterior capsule opening, we probably want to avoid a technique like divide and conquer. Because as you try to split the nucleus after making the grooves for divide and conquer, you may be exerting that outward pressure that could cause the capsular bag to rip. And remember, there's not an intact, round, strong capsular rexus. It's a relatively round anterior capsular opening, but it's not a capsular rexus that has that continuous edge all around and has that strength. This thing doesn't. So we need to be very careful here. We're moving the nucleus. That looks pretty good. Pupils come down a little bit as well. There's a little bit of cortex left there in the capsular bag. You can try grab it with the phaco probe, but maybe easier just to use the IA probe. Now, we have to be careful here. Let's not let the eye deflate. So injecting BSS and keeping it inflated. Now, using the uh, IA probe, we'll remove the lens cortex that's left there. And again, now we're going to fill the eye up with our uh, viscoelastic and we're not going to let the AC collapse. We don't want the anterior chamber to collapse because if it does, we could have forces placed on that weakened capsule and we could have a radialization. Fortunately, in this case, we're safe. So a little more viscoelastic going in there, getting a nice good fill. This is a cohesive viscoelastic. And now as we expand the capsular bag and open the pupil, you can see there's the outline of our capsule opening. It's right up against the pupil margin. Here comes the eye. Well, in this case, a three-piece lens. Could you put a single-piece lens? For sure. We're going to put a three-piece lens, trying to put it in the capsule, so 100% within the capsule bag. If the capsule bag is irregular and there is some issue, we can always put this three-piece lens into the sulcus, so that makes it easy. 
If you start off with a three-piece land that it doesn't go as planned upon eyewall insertion, you can always dial it into the sulcus and do a different form of optic capture. So this looks great. We'll finish up the case. And I want to say thank you for watching. Be sure to check out our teaching website, cataractcoach.com. I know you love the YouTube videos, so do I. But there's a lot more material on Cataract Coach. And we post a new video every single day. And we can send you a free email. Just sign up for it. Thanks.